All right, everyone, welcome, welcome back to the devlog series for the game about a photographer joining an expedition to the end of the world. As you can hear, I'm a bit under the weather, so sorry about that. Last time, I talked about the inspiration for the project and showed you some of the features for the 001 pre-alpha. In this video, I want to give you guys a sneak peek into the 002 pre-alpha that you can already see on the screen and show you something I did in the quest system that I think is cool. First of all, for those of you who played 001, you'll see that we have a new map. This is another asset that I got for free off the marketplace, and I figured I'd spice things up. Also, in the previous version, you had just one quest. You had to take a picture of a door, and that door wasn't interactable. You can open it, you can close it, you could just take a picture of it. For this version, I have something else in mind. Let me hit play and show you. When we load into the level, you can see that we have our oil lamp here, and I can actually light it. That means that we have an interactive subject for our photos, and I think that's pretty nice. Also, in 001, you spawned right next to the door and to the default Unreal Engine mannequin that gave you the only quest. In this version, I want to have you guys moving around and exploring. Uh, you know, the map looks really nice. You have a lot of places where I can hide things for you to find. And if I go for a bird's eye view of the map, then you can see that it's not all that big. That's what she said! <laughs> so exploring it should be cool. Let me show you what I did with the quest system. Here are the data types I use for the quest system. We have the quest, we have the stage, and we have the objective. Each quest has an array of stages, and each stage has an array of objectives, and each objective has its objective gameplay tag. The quest in 001, where you had to first take a picture of the door and then show it to the mannequin, is a quest with two stages and one objective each. And the thing I did that I think is cool is the way I use the objective gameplay tag. Unreal's gameplay tags are a set of hierarchical labels that you can use to label things. And when something happens in the game that has the same gameplay tag as an active objective, I know I can progress the objective. Let me show you how this works. This is the base quest actor. You have one of these for each of your active quests, and what it does is manage the quest's life cycle. And when it sets up the objective listeners, it calls the listen for gameplay messages node. What this node does is it listens for gameplay messages based on the channel they're broadcasted in. And as you can see, I have it set up to have the objective gameplay tag as the channel. What that means is whenever I broadcast a message with this channel, the handle objective message function is called. And this is where I increment the objective. What I like about the system is that it's very flexible. Gameplay messages can be broadcasted from anything in the game. It can be from arriving at a location. It can be from choosing a dialogue option, it can be from taking a photo of something, really anything. It's very flexible. And that means that setting up quests would be pretty easy. However, using this setup, I can only ever increment specific objectives by one. Let me give you an example. Let's say we have an achievement where you have to take three pictures of people. And whenever you take a picture of a person, I broadcast a message on the picture.person channel. That means I can have picture.person as the objective gameplay tag and whenever I broadcast these messages, handle objective message will work and the objective will increment. But what if I want to do something else? What if I want the achievement to be take three pictures of anything? And like we have picture.person for people, maybe I have picture.object for, well, objects. In that case, I could change objective gameplay tag to a tag container, which lets me have more than one tag, which is not a good solution for this, it won't scale well, right? No, whenever I add a new gameplay tag for a picture, I would have to also remember to add it here, or it wouldn't work. Or I could change the match type from exact match to partial match, which would, in our example, match picture, and not picture person or picture object. But that means that I would have it as partial for everything, which might break other quests. The best thing for this probably would be to add it to the objective data. And then the objective data could configure which way I want to listen for gameplay messages for this specific objective. 
but that's not necessarily enough. What if I don't want to just increment by one? What if I want to increment by a specific amount or do something else entirely? For that, I have a payload. I can actually send data with a message I'm broadcasting, but as you can see, I'm ignoring it for now. I have no use for it. And even if I did want to use the payload right now, not all messages would necessarily have the same payload. So that would force me to either have a gigantic payload type that covers all possible cases, which would be terribly cumbersome and unmanageable, or to have handle objective message know all possible payload types, and that would be terribly cumbersome and unmanageable. The clean solution to this problem would be to have the payload type, the match type, and the objective handler all sit on the objective data. And then I could use the handler type in a factory pattern and instantiate a specific handler per objective. That would definitely cover a lot of use cases, but I didn't spend the time on doing it because I'm just not sure I'd need it for this project. I'd rather keep it simple. If the need ever arises, I can make that change and I try to keep myself covered with executable specifications as best I can, so fingers crossed it should be fine. Let me know if you want me to make a video about executable specifications. So that's an engineering problem I faced and how I solved it. I hope that was interesting for you. Did you find it insightful? Let me know. Also, as I said, pre-alpha 002 should be out soon. I'll announce it both here and on my Discord server. So make sure to like and subscribe and do the bell notifications and everything and join the Discord. Link will be in the description. So stay tuned for more good things. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.